Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunplan Review, and today I'm taking a look at the high-grade Choo Choo's Demi Trainer from Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, where this will put you back about $12, or 12 euro, a little less. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, the link will be down there in the description. Now let's get right on into it. So first off, talking a little bit about the build, this is again another high quality awesome build just like we've seen so far with this line. Inside the box we do have four runners of plastic, the A parts, multicolored as usual, we've got a very nice clear part for the lens which may just be blacklight reactive, not sure yet, but it does catch the light perfectly. The B parts are that unusual kind of yellowy green color, C is the gray parts which are a little bit kind of a brownish gray as opposed to a pure gray, and the same goes for the D parts in here which is the actual runner that makes this Choo Choo's Demi Trainer as opposed to the Demi Trainer we will be seeing coming up next month. This has the big old rifle and some extra hands on it. There are some stickers in here too, these aren't for covering up the eye thankfully, these are mainly for on the body as well as the weapon. And when it comes to the actual assembly in here, it is easy to snip out and put together, just like all of the kits we have seen so far. Now I have noticed so far that this kit does feature a few more aspects that will need a little bit of attention, like mold lines, but really not all that much. Deceptively simple looking head, and I guess that can be said about the kit in general, it is deceptively simple looking. It is simple as well as our Bandai's designs right now, but it all links together into something that is better than the sum of its parts. I will mention C-clip joints for the elbows and the knees are here to stay it seems with the Witch from Mercury line whether you like those or not, but this kind of does make this kit in line with Bandai's other offerings including 30 minute missions. Anyway once you get it all snapped together this is what it looks like, now let's check it out. So jumping into the aesthetics with the full 360 degree spin and I am super impressed by this. I expected it to be a little bit more basic than it actually is, but Bandai has really added some of its nicer, more modern features into this particular kit, especially with the layering of parts from underneath to create a really nice color separation without the need for tiny, tiny parts. It is very nice. Now the overall design right here of the Demi Trainer really does match its shtick. Basically, what we've got here is a very basic mecha, which is a training platform for essentially training to use mecha. This is definitely reflected in its very simplistic design, and honestly, this is probably the most real robot looking robot we've seen from the Witch from Mercury so far when it comes to the model kits. This, I, well, assume has been heavily inspired from Armored Trooper Voltoms. The combination of the head design on this, the greenish color scheme, and the kind of heavy duty, militaristic, unapologetically rudimentary looking mechaness of this just has that scope dog feel. Anyway, as usual, there it is side by side with the actual line art of Choo Choo's Demi Trainer. Of course, we do not have the rifle attached onto it just yet. We'll take a look at that later, but it's there for you to judge it yourself. Anyway, let's get into those size comparisons. So when it comes to an average size mobile suit, there's the granddaddy himself, the Beyond Global High Grade. There is another average size Gundam, which is the real grade Gundam Mark II. So Essentially, this is par for the course for a 144th scale kit about Gundam height. Moving through some G-Witch kits, there's the Rubrus, Gundam Ariel, Bigger Boo, Guel's Delanza, and the Delanza Standard Type. As for some other kits off the shelf, there's the Hajiro Boshi, Build Burning, and the Moon Gundam. I'm jumping in a little bit closer now to take a look at the details, this kit has some really, really nice aspects. First off, this does have a somewhat asymmetrical build, that is the shoulder with the bar up on the right hand side, and the shield up on the left hand side. Besides that though, everything else is pretty much all symmetrical. The layering of parts here is absolutely fantastic, like those grey sections, shek shek sections in the chest which are probably some kind of thrusters, all the part separation up on the head there with that nice lens in the face, all that armour around it, the bar around the top of the head, the antenna, there's so much going on here and everything you're seeing, that is all colour separated besides some panel lining which I did to just accentuate the recessed detail. The only sticker actually used in the robot itself is the one you're seeing right there in the clavicle, but that is recessed so it doesn't really look so apparent. And the detailing on this is a nice mix of both very subtle but at the same time very nice. For example, some areas like the legs, you don't really have too much over the top panel lining, but then the thrusters on the side have some very nice intricate details. Like I said already, this is a deceptively simple kit that actually has so much payoff. It looks great in poses, it looks great just standing there, and that kind of raw militaristic vibe really looks cool. 
I will mention there are some typical model kit aspects that are very apparent on this kit due to its well even the model kit itself is kind of simply designed when it comes to the elements so it does mean you do get a lot of knobs all over the place that will need a lot of cleaning and quite a lot of surface mold lines which I have not seen on a kit in quite some time. Now this isn't everywhere we've got some really unique parts that work quite well like if you take the lower leg segments right here you can see that these are a full piece so there is no seam line at all. The actual business parts that actually make the joints and stuff of those go down through them. So that means we're not actually getting a seam line or a mold line on those at all, which is incredible. Those look great. The same goes with the upper leg. That is all one piece. No seam line, which is ridiculous and no mold line, which is even more ridiculous. But there are some elements like the cuff segments of the arm and the upper arm, which will need a little bit more cleanup during the build. But besides that, this thing looks absolutely spectacular. So now jumping into the accessories and here's absolutely everything that comes inside of the box which is that big beam rifle and a pair of alternate hands. Always a nice inclusion. Starting off with the hands we've had the fists slash holding hands on this the whole time so far and we also have a pair of alternate open hands which is pretty cool especially because the Demi Trainer has very unique what I can only describe as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle hands. Now I will mention the widespread hands do come on the runner that is exclusive to this kit which is the Choo Choo's Demi Trainer. The backs of these are actually in grey, which is not colour accurate compared to the actual fist style ones. But good news, the backs are completely, completely transferable between the two. So if you want to keep it colour accurate, you can do it. But also it is nice of Bandai to include a back anyway. So if you don't want to constantly be switching them out and you don't really care that the back is grey, you can have that too. But there's the green back from the fist on the widespread open hand. So when it comes to the weapons in here, we only do have the one, but this is one hell of a weapon, and this is the large beam rifle. What the instruction says about this is, a custom weapon built specifically for this unit using the Demi Trainer's original large scale firearm as a base. The rifle is mounted to its arm unit in front while being carried. It receives a direct supply of energy from the unit's backpack and can fire at both short and long ranges by adjusting its convergence rate. This right here is a very nice and huge looking rifle and once again I feel this is 30 minute missions inspired. First off it looks very very nice as you can see here but this is made out of a bunch of elements. You can remove the barrel from the front like so and the stock segment from around back. That stock segment is attached via this little slot attachment point very 30 minute missions looking and the front segment the barrel is attached via a peg. The main body of this has multiple moving parts including a swinging side to side front handle an arm that connects it into the mecha's crotch that has rotation up top, closer to the gun and rotation closer to the crotch so you get plenty of movement there. Finally we do have a handle towards the back and once again that has rotation and that can spin the full 360 degrees around. Now one more element that is definitely very 30 minute missions, on the underside of this we do have another slot which looks like a magazine or something similar can be attached. Now I will mention there is a sold separate Demi Trainer coming up in future as well as a weapon pack for using with it. So that does mean you can make your own custom weapons out of modular elements like we would see with 30 minute missions kits. Getting this attached onto the mecha and post is actually really easy. There's plenty of Gundam model kits out there that do have mounted weapons that also are held by the hands and sometimes it can be a real balancing act or a hassle trying to get everything lined up. This is definitely not the case in here. This works perfect. It plugs perfectly and tightly into the crotch, holds on really well. The range of movement here is fantastic. And I will mention we do have a cool gimmick in the waist unit of this kit which allows it to actually tilt forward at the waist which makes it line up to the weapon even better than it would have been in the standard position. You can swing the handle up to the front arm and pop it into the hand super simple without having to remove the back or anything like that. And popping it into the back hand is simple too. You're only going to get one real pose out of this while it is attached just like what you're seeing here. But this holds on perfectly and this looks spectacular. Bandai has executed this absolutely perfectly. I'll also mention we do have a pliable yet rough and tough wire which attaches this to the backpack. This isn't your usual wimpy gunpla wire, this is a decent little wire in here. So now finally moving into the articulation on this and first off a little bit of a comment on the build. This is rock solid, absolutely, except for one thing and I did it to it so uh, I can't complain. So that is the front skirting armor. I did snip these apart on the runner which means they're now a little bit on the loose and flappy side. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to move them independently like this to move together but it does kind of undermine the power of those joints. Otherwise this is completely plastic on plastic and rock solid. Now there's a couple of elements about the articulation on this that really did impress me. First off 
is the head. I thought it would have the side to side you're seeing right here and that only. But if you pop off the head, we do have a ball joint in there. So if you actually just pop this on and not push it all the way down, you do get the head tilt side to side, the look all the way up, the look all the way down. So you can get some nice dynamic poses out of this. I never thought you'd be able to. Also, this bar up in the head, you're able to raise this up. It does catch on the antenna up there a little bit, but you can force it past it and it does move up like so, which is a cool extra. Now, we'll mention we only have 90 degree bends at the elbows, which is a little bit on the disappointing side, but at the same time, it's kind of charming. This is a very remedial mecha compared to some of the crazy ones we're going to be seeing, and we have seen, especially the Gundams, in this series so far. So it does make sense that it would have some limitations when it comes to its actual engineering. This works perfect for every pose that you could possibly want, though, so it does work out fine. We have some cool elements in here as well. For example, we do have those kind of floating shoulder segments inside of the body, basically where the shoulder attaches into. This can move around a lot via a ball joint connecting forwards into the torso. And when the arm is actually attached onto that, you're able to flare this out in a very nice way that gives it an almost anatomical movement while still looking extremely mechanical. It also gives you some great articulation when it comes to raising the arms up into the air. Pretty damn cool. The combination of a very smooth and nice ab crunch with the actual cool mechanism in the waist, which allows it to tilt forward even more, combined with some good, decent kicks, nice knee bends, means that this kit in total is a very nice posing experience, very smooth and very strong. So on slapping that foot on the ground, I will mention this kit has absolutely no ankle pivot to the front and back whatsoever. Zero, zilch, none. That is so strange. Funnily enough, it seems to be intentional by Bandai because there is no ball joint in here at all. Once again, this might be just to keep it, like the elbows, a little bit restricted compared to the more technologically advanced mecha from the show. However, we do have a ball joint attaching the toes, which is very expressive. And just like the other kits we would have seen, the other two Gundams, we do have a pivoting heel as well. Now, I will mention I am disappointed that the wheel on the heel does not spin. That's no big deal, no deal breaker or anything like that. But deep down, I wish we had a real wheel. The knees on this kit kick absolute arse. These are brilliant. First off, we've got these moving segments which have a bit of a safety bar on them, probably to protect the joints of the mecha, similar to what we would have seen on the feet way back when with the guard frame. Then we've got these thrusters on the side that can not just rotate the full 360 degree spin, but they also have a sliding mechanism as well, which allows them to slide up and forward. So these just look and feel and pose fantastically. Also, I will mention we do have what looks like the 30 minute missions hips on here, as in where the side skirt would attach. So you could probably stick some of those on if you wanted to, or we might be seeing some upgrades for these kits in the future. Damn, this is good. So now popping into some test poses to see what we can actually get out of this when it comes to actual poses. And all I can say is this kit has more articulation than it has any right to have. This is phenomenal. Getting it into the standard pose, that I used to test out a kit's articulation and this absolutely destroys it. The ab crunch, the arms, everything on here is fantastic. And even the fact that we don't have any pivot towards the front on the feet does not matter because we've got so much towards the sides. This thing absolutely kills it. On trying out some more poses with this kit, it, well, there's nothing I could not pull off. Everything felt fluid, nothing fell off. It's strong, holds poses perfectly, and it always looks incredible. I am blown away by what band I have done here. The double waist joint that gives us the ab crunch is just ridiculous. It just feels so nice. It even has a neck, which is kind of surprising considering its look. I am in love with the Demi Trainer right here. The fact that they're releasing a standard one as well means I just want 20,000 of these. This poses up a storm in a way I never thought it would be able to. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And this is a platinum tier kit, as in this is almost perfection. Well, essentially it is perfection. It just hasn't crossed that line into Gundam godliness. First off, this is absolutely beautiful, requires no stickers besides two on the rifle and one in the chest. We have a nice clear piece in the face and the colors just look spectacular and the detailing is great. When it comes to the accessories, we've got extra hands with extra backs in here, color accurate and non-color accurate, depending on what you want. And it all works perfectly. The rifle is super nice, mounts perfectly, it can hold on to it and pose so well with it. It's all smooth and perfect. Finally then, when it comes to the articulation, I am shocked by how good this is. This just blows my mind. This is like way back when, when the gym gym blew my mind, but this is on a whole other level entirely. 
This looks fun, it is fun, it's fun to pose, and it's fun to build. This kit is incredible. If you want, or we're thinking of getting one of these, I say go for it, go for it, go for it. Anyway, as always, I'll throw the link down there in the description. You can get yours through Hobby Link Japan. I'll also pop the standard link, or should I say the link for the standard Demi Trainer there too, which is still on pre-order. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members, including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunpla UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc., Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fon.